It's now time to check on the uh, download features of the watch itself. So there's the Phoenix. Now initially within the Garmin menu there's nothing there to really kind of help me connect uh, wirelessly or in any other way. There's an agent um, which is used uh, for the wireless device and then training center which doesn't work with the Phoenix. I did t uh, check this, that's downloadable software as is Basecamp but we're looking at that later. Now as you can see here um, the Garmin watch actually behaves like a drive which is visible within in my case Windows Explorer on my uh, uh, Windows laptop and with that in mind you're now able to kind of delve into the um, files on the watch itself. You can see that within a few short seconds it's already identified uh, the USB part of the um, Phoenix and now we're ready to upload the workouts. Once you're signed in, I already have the Garmin Connect account by the way for other Garmin watches. It's a matter of um, simply the site recognizing things which it does like virtually straight away. I've always liked Garmin software, always. None of this stuff is uh, that fiddly to me or that difficult to recognize at all. Um, now a lot of the workouts that I did were done through a group which um, I got to know. This group is actually linked to the shop mentioned in part two of this review, that's Runways uh, with its own Facebook page here. Let's take a quick look at the people uh, in the group. Gauda de Luna. Hoy es el día. Oggi è la giornata. Heute ist der Tag. Ein neuer Tag ist da. Gauda de Luna. Now this is from one of the runs with the group and as you can see the um, the data are very kind of bland, the mapping is good but I prefer someone that's much larger screen which is why this watch really 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 needs uh, to be connected regularly to a computer in order to make the uh, best use of it. Now here we can see me drilling down into Garmin Connect. This is a, a pedestrianized strip. Um, it goes way up to a lighthouse and what you can see is here the data represented in Garmin Connect um, for this self same workout. Um, elevation gain and loss, heart rate, okay, maximum heart rate 175. I, I really like the way this is um, represented here. Here you can see me altering the heart rate for example simply from um, time to distance. It's all very very well laid out and I really kind of have got into this uh, kind of way of looking at things. But regarding the temperature, now look, Garmin there sells an optional temperature sensor which is around about $30. Um, try as I might, I couldn't get accurate temperature readings from the Phoenix. See, it says 75 degrees, that's ridiculous. This is in the afternoon when it's getting colder, so even after 20 minutes there, it's saying 54. It's more like 45 degrees actually. Now here's me editing a workout and as you can see it's it's pretty powerful in that it's able to do that. This is what I like about this stuff. Um, however, later on I see that when I try to send the workout to the watch the following happens. It says my communicator is out of date but at least it tells me that. I don't have to google it or struggle to, in, to get into any um, interface all right so it's uh, at least it's prompting me at least it's telling me what i should be doing and how i should be doing it so the communicator is ready to be plugged in there um which takes a few minutes it says no available reputation information what that would probably means is that my norton security software has yet to identify it i'm now able to identify the watch itself there you go and finally um, get that workout transmitted to the watch itself Again, when you're using this watch on a day-to-day -day basis, it does become much easier. Um, if you remember, that's out in the park there. I've decided to call it Park New, and it's importing the course. And just a few seconds later, this watch does take some time to load up the tracks each time you turn it on, by the way. It's there as Park New and ready to use.
Garmin Connected helpfully pointed out that my software was um, ready to be updated now. As you can see there, I hope it said 2.8 on the watch, but it said um, 2.3 updatable to 2.9. Let's see what actually happened here. As you can see, it's not that painful a process and you know it's all quite smooth it's now turning on for the first time ah it's 3.0 not 2.9 and the tracks have not been deleted you see neither has the watch if essentially been reset at this point i'm feeling confident enough to download basecamp now this is uh, garmin's application for gps devices and it does um, some pretty good and extensive um, mapping which can be quite um, involved um, it was important that I get the right software version, so yet again I had to download stuff. Don't forget, once this is downloaded, then that's it. Basecamp, remember, is an application, not a website. They prompted me to, as it were, update the software. So I'm going to try this right now. This might seem to be a convoluted process, it actually isn't. Um, and then yet again, you see now we've got five items in Garmin's menu, not the two that were there originally, namely Ant Plus and Training Center. At that point, it recognizes it right there, as you can see. So now's the point uh, where I'm saying receive from device. That for me is a pretty good looking interface. Obviously the map there is central and there's the one that we've already looked at before, the worker. Look at all those data, incredible. Points, elevations, leg distance, time, position. A lot of stuff which I can't use but which may be of much more use to the orienteering people. That's the self same work out there on Basecamp. Now as you can see it's not um, properly um, laid out because you need Google Earth for this so I do apologize for not having this on my laptop however there are ways to address this here's Garmin Connect course which is showing the map actually playing out and it's showing speed and heart rate there for the graph and then it's got um, this is on being maps there, the uh, mile markers, and then of course the overlays there with the cities and what have you. But it goes further than that with the GPX files. You can take uh, my Training Peaks account, which is linked to my Timex Global Trainer, and then upload the GPX file from the Phoenix to Training Peaks. And now what you see is the map again playing out. This is on MapQuest. And so it is playing there live. That's the GPS file only but it's also showing other data for example the elevation and again you've got a clear map there with the overlay names of the roads for example and the mile markers I do think that's a pretty powerful feature now here's the new way hike this is on um, Garmin Adventures which is part of Basecamp and again what you have is kind of a it looks almost like a, a simulator again I do apologize for not having a strong enough computer here but this will all change in the new year when I have a, a new uh, quad core laptop as you can see these are my waypoints which are all <laughs> recorded very very close together um, what's happening here is that that photo that you saw which labeled the hike is actually included with one of the waypoints which fictitiously was included as part of the route um, down um, to the top of the mountain there and what I've done is to plonk it on one of the waypoints so what's happening is that it's actually playing through can you see what the arrow is and there lo and behold it's going to have whatever photo you took in this case it's simply one of the phoenix but now you can see that it's playing through and playing through and then it simply ends I still wanted the definitive mapping experience and in this case available on a mobile phone. I'm able to get that through Basecamp and as you can see there's a B for Bluetooth. In addition to Ant Plus available on numerous garments you've got the Bluetooth 4.0 a world leading feature that's available on only a few watches actually. The Casio G-Shop there and the Motorola Moto Active which is a good watch but not great. As before, I felt I needed feedback on the Phoenix, so the great thing is I found out that two of my colleagues in the residence where I'm living not only have iPhones, but uh, haven't seen the Phoenix, so I knew that would be useful for their perspective. This is Paul, how are you doing, Paul? 
What do you think of the Phoenix there? So that watch is 470 euros at runways on Parnell Street. Do you think it's worth it? What do you think of it in terms of the size and the physical weight, etc.? Yeah, it's very light, yeah, and yeah. it looks very stylish, yeah. Good. Yeah. See myself wearing It's a very viewable display, isn't it? Yeah, it's very highlighted there, you can see, very easily. Right, if you press the orange button, you'll get some kind of an indication. Okay. Let's go, Mama. That looks pretty simple so far, doesn't it, Liam? Mm hmm And what's happening now on the iPhone? What do you have to do there? You just have to download it, install the app. That's the mode that we're going to use, by the way. GPS. Start GPS. Keep pressing the down button, and then you'll see all the various modes there. The clock, which is very, very configurable. Alerts. The alerts. There are nine alerts. We've downloaded now uh, this. So we'll like open it. Seems as though that's what we do, yeah. I'll be able to get this through the time, you know, I'm, I'll be measuring it. It's great to see how smoothly the uh, iPhone works. Now, the interface on that seems to be extremely intuitive. And what I'm having to teach Paul there is that, you know, this watch has a whole load of menus and the like, which, um... You know, they, there is a learning curve. What do you think of that as an app? Do you think it looks good? Do you yeah, think it looks intuitive? Yeah. Go to app. As of right now, then, I think if we press the orange button, we'll see what happens there. That says Bluetooth and loading. Oh. Oh, it said it on the actual app. Phoenix. Yeah. Not bad. Is that you? It's me, all right. Oh, fantastic. That's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Well, as you can see there, I created um, Park New there from one of my previous uh, runs. That was probably done on the Forerunner 910 XT. And now, that's the one I did. Now, that's on the Wicklow Way. So, Liam, if you care to do the honours there and press that thing, let's see what happens. Exactly. Right. So as of right now, that route is being um, transmitted via Bluetooth 4.0 direct to the um, device. Hmm? Five hours walk. Hmm? Be a lot of... Here we go. Can we do pinch to zoom on that, Liam? Do you want to try that with two fingers? Fantastic. Yeah, and then presumably you can scroll, right? Do you want to try that in various directions? Obviously the red line is the route. Harold's Cross, Ranelagh. At this point I started to see the power of the iPhone in conjunction with the Phoenix and this had given me a level of detail which I'd never seen on a mobile phone before because for example um, even my PC was unable to um, correctly load Google Earth so this was a real eye-opener for me in terms of the resolution and the usability of these two devices. It's a very intuitive interface isn't it? So I do think that given that these devices are completely separate and different in every sense this, this is, makes for a very enticing combination, would you agree? Well, he came back a different way? Yes, yeah, yeah, so I came back a different way. What's great is that Liam, as a non-sporting user, was able to discern that route extremely clearly. That's me stumbling around near the summit. <laughs> Overall, for me, the Phoenix has been a stunning watch. Um, packed with features but with some competition even from their own devices like the Fortrex there. Um, the Ambit is definitely the one to look at in terms of uh, comparison so it's got the training effect as well but also very expensive. Um, in terms of the watch functionality I don't think this watch can be beaten it's phenomenal the customizability in GPS again extremely good the just the hardware is, is fantastic. Um, the computer integration is not just desirable, it's essential for this kind of device. Overall, 9.25 out of 10, but choose carefully, people. That's all for now. Thanks very much for listening, alright? See you later.